I'm Nick, and if you're having deja vu, I don't blame you. This is the Gigabyte B850 Aorus Stealth Ice, and it shares a lot of similarities with the X870 Aorus Stealth Ice. What I mean by that is, it's almost identical in every single way, other than the price. Let's take a closer look. Alrighty, here it is, the Gigabyte B850 Aorus Stealth Ice. Let's get that motherboard out of the way so we can take a little bit of a look at all of the things that come with this new board. And to be honest, motherboards don't really come with that much anymore, but you know, it's worth taking a look at. First of all, we've got some documentation. There's also some stickers in here, as well as the warranty card. There's this little holographic Aorus badge, which you can put on your case. Now, I've been informed that some people actually use these, which is kind of cool. So I guess that's why they keep including them. These are isolation pads, just in case you wanted to use them. There's also a G connector. This is useful for cases that have separate case wiring. So this is for the power light, the hard disk activity light, the reset button, and the power switch, I suppose, as well as two SATA or SATA cables for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your three and a half inch hard drives, or as I like to call them, spinning rust drives. There's also an antenna for the built-in Wi-Fi 7 on the B850 Aorus Stealth Ice. But ladies and gents, let's unsheath the board so we can take a bit of a closer look at all of the features on this board. As you're about to find out, there is not much difference between this board and the X870 board other than the VRM layout and there's no RGB on the heatsink that is above the 24 pin power. But just in case, if you're not aware, just so people don't get upset, I am reusing most of the footage from the X870 video because they're basically the same board and yeah, some of the voiceover too. <laughs> I'm not being lazy. It's more about, I'm gonna say it, it's more about Gigabyte being lazy and making the same board twice. So if they can do it, I'm gonna do it too. Not lazy because you know, they make motherboards, but you know how it goes. First of all, we've got the front panel connectors for all the lights and all the switches. There's two PWM fan headers. There's two USB 2.0 headers for things like liquid coolers and RGB controllers and all that jazz. There's a TPM header. There's a three pin five volt addressable RGB header. There's an LED demo header, which we typically use to light the board up with a USB power bank, as well as the front panel audio header. There's a front panel five gigabit USB header. There's a PWM fan header two SATA or SATA ports for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your three and a half inch hard drives, two three pin five volt addressable RGB headers. There's also two PWM fan headers. There's two sensor headers for things like thermal probes and whatnot. There's a 24 pin power connector as well as another three pin five volt addressable RGB header. Along the top edge, there's three more PWM fan headers or your CPU fan and your liquid cooler and all that jazz, as well as a four pin EPS power connector and an eight pin EPS power connector. One thing you will notice is with Gigabyte's back connector motherboards, they typically use less EPS power connectors than their front connector counterparts. On the top side of the board, there is a debug LED screen, as well as a Q flash button, a power button, and a reset button. And if you look a little bit closer, there's also an LED array for postcode diagnostics. This just makes your life a little bit easier if you're having troubles with your system. There's two PCIe slots on the Gigabyte B850 or a Stealth Ice. There's a full by 16 PCIe Gen 5 slot, then there's a by 16 sized slot down the bottom which is actually a PCIe Gen 4 x 4 slot. There's also a quick release button to open up the top PCIe slot in case you wanted to pull out your graphics card. It does make your life a lot easier. As for the VRM layout, this is where the X870 board and the B850 board differ. The B850 Aura Stealth Ice has a 14 plus 2 plus 2 phase VRM layout with seven plus seven phases in a parallel layout to make up the first 14 phases. But this board also still features 80 amp smart power stages. The cooling for this VRM layout is pretty extreme. There's also a heat pipe that connects both of the massive heat sinks together for optimal cooling. 
This board is an AM5 board, so it features AMD's AM5 socket or LGA1718. It also has standard AM5 cooler mounting. This is also compatible with most AM4 coolers as well. Let's do our usual thing here, guys. I want to pop the socket open. This is for people who have never seen inside of a socket. You may be building for your first time and you want to know what it looks like inside an AM5 socket. I typically do this to save you the heartache and just to show you what it's like when you're just about to drop a CPU in the socket. For memory, the Gigabyte B850 Aura Stealth Ice will support up to four DDR5 DIMM modules, up to 256 gigs in total at 8200 mega transfers. Keep in mind, this is the specification not the recommendation. There's a whole bunch of M.2 storage on this board. Let's pull the heat sinks off so you can get a closer look at the M.2 slots on this board. There are four in total, and all of the M.2 slots on this board are completely toolless. Gone are the days of M.2 screws. There's a PCIe Gen 5 M.2 slot. There's two PCIe Gen 4 M.2 slots. The PCIe Gen 5 M.2 slots on this board say Gen 5 on the top to make it easier to identify them. There's three slots at the top of the board and then there's one slot that is rotated towards the bottom of the board above the bottom PCIe slot. As for rear IO, there's four USB 3.2 ports, an HDMI 2.1 port, four USB 2.0 ports. There's also another USB 3.2 port, which will be for BIOS flashback. There's five gigabit ethernet, another USB 3.2 port, there's 10 gigabit USB Type-C. There's no USB 4 on this board at all. There's the antenna connectors for the built-in Wi-Fi 7. There's a line-out jack, a microphone in jack, and a SPDIF slash optical output. I know there's been a lot of mention in this video about the similarities between the B850 and the X870 board, but I wanted to show you guys exactly what I meant about that. Look at the design of both of these boards. They're basically identical in every single way. All of the surface mount components are essentially exactly the same as well. If we take off the M.2 heatsinks, you can see that everything underneath with all of those surface mount components are basically the same again. But the most interesting part of all of this is when we flip the boards over, they have exactly the same connectors on both boards as well. So in terms of the back connector part of the board, they are identical. However, the real difference is, as you can see here, with the rear I.O. So you are missing out on features like USB 4, which B850 simply does not support. But to be honest, if you're not using something like USB 4 or you don't intend on using it, there's no reason to buy the X870 board. You can save quite a bit of money on buying the B850 board. To me, for someone who's building a PC who's looking at buying new hardware, in terms of current gen, B850 makes a lot more sense than X870 if you don't need those features. Another thing to think about is the B650E or a Stealth Ice 2. That's a board that's available and most likely cheaper too. The only other thing that sets this board apart really from what I've noticed is, I think I've already mentioned this, but there's no RGB on the heatsink that is above the 24 pin power connector. Rather, I mean on top of, because it's a back connector board, you know how it works. And there you have it. This is uh, basically exactly the same board as the X870 board that Aorus offers as well, other than the price, which is quite obvious, which we'll circle back to in a moment. But I gotta say, what I'm liking with these boards now is five gigabit ethernet is becoming ubiquitous for both gigabyte and MSI boards. We're seeing this basically everywhere. 
With that new Realtek 10 gig chip that just got announced over at Computex, we're gonna see 10 gig become pretty much standard in the next year. Well, I don't know that for sure, but we're gonna predict. And if we see boards like, let's say B850 series of boards or the 50 series of boards, this is getting confusing. With 10 gig ethernet, it's going to be a no brainer for home labbers. Like this is my whole thing, guys. When I look at boards like this, I'm like, what else can I use it for? It's not always just for gaming PCs. It's like, what can I use this for in five years time? right? Five gigabit ethernet is good, but it's a strange multi-gig standard. You have to have a 10 gig switch to support five gig anyway. So why not just make everything 10 gig? Look how quickly gigabit adoption happened over more than 20 years ago. And we've been on gigabit and 2.5 gig for such a long time. Let's just jump to 10. We've got USB ports that do 10 gig. Why don't we just have regular networking that also does 10 gig? But for now, five gig's fine, for now. Speaking of for now, the price for now for the Gigabyte B850 Aura Stealth Ice is 265 US dollars, or around about 529 Aussie dollars at the time of filming this video. You can buy this board right now. It's available, it's got back connectors, you can't see any of the cables, and that's the only real reason to buy this board. To answer the biggest question that we saw on the X870 Aura Stealth Ice video was, does this board also come in black? Unfortunately, it doesn't. However, Gigabyte is doing most of the rest of their series in both black and white. As for the stealth boards for now, they're only in white. Yeah, I hope that answers your question. And if you've got any other questions, drop on down below in the comment section and someone will answer your question, or I will. Just depends on if I see it or not. Let us know what you think of back connect the motherboards. I like them, as I always say, when we're building and reviewing cases, the back connector boards, well, if you've got cases that support back connectors, they're always the easiest and cleanest to build. They look the best when we're shooting B-roll for you guys, and they're the quickest to build, which I really, really like. In fact, when you have a back connector board with an air cooler, if you plan everything out, you can build an entire system in about 10 to 15 minutes. While I've got you here, do you guys like this shirt? If you guys don't know what Amiga is, it's my uh, favorite series of computers from the 80s to 90s. Shout out to Robtech for being an absolute legend. He bought me this as a gift. No one ever sends me gifts other than Rob. This is such a cool shirt, it's a good fit too. Just so you know, Rob, I didn't want to show you the shirt until I was wearing it in a video, but it is very nice. Now I'll never wear it again in a video. He's also wearing the underwear that you bought him. Don't tell him that. Robitech also doesn't know, because you know, Robtech and Robitech. Some people get them confused, but Robitech bought me underwear and I sometimes wear it. They're pretty cute. It's pink undies. They've got monkeys on them. Pink undies. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Pretty cute. It's a shame about the skid marks. <laughs>